you're watching me cook pork patties on my discada. Now I've already done a video, ooh, that one got a little dark. Now I've already got a video on these. These are absolutely delicious. My family loves them. I like to eat them with just Heinz 57 sauce. But what I've done different, that one's sticking. Why is that one sticking? It shouldn't be sticking. Flip on over. It got a little dark, that's why it was sticking. It shouldn't be that dark. But I put this uh, Heath Riles garlic butter in these. It's the only difference. Besides, my son likes them a little crispy. That's not the subject of the video. The video is today we're going to be making macaroni and cheese in this plow disc cooker, this cowboy wok, this discada, this disco. We're going to make mac and cheese in it. Hey, you're watching Big Lou Barbecue and other things I want to do. I'm Big Lou and this is what I've got going on for you. We're going to make macaroni and cheese in the cowboy wok, the discada, the uh, plow disc. It's made out of a plow disc with handles welded on by the fine folks at Southwest Disc. All right, that's where I bought mine from and you can buy yours from there too. I don't have a discount code, Jack Strinkwater does, but I don't have a, a discount code or anything like that. I just like using his stuff, all right? Anyway, we're gonna make it in the uh, plow disc. Now, this is a very similar recipe to my skillet macaroni and cheese video that I did in a video right about there. All right, and um, in that video, uh, you can see the basic recipe. I like it because it doesn't use a bechamel sauce. That's sort of like a roux with flour and stuff in it. All right, uh, we're gonna use evaporated milk, okay? We're going to use uh, pasta. We're gonna use about four cups. That's a liter if, of macaroni if you're in Canada, all right? So it's about four cups of macaroni. A gallon of water and uh, gonna use some uh, stick of butter. And the main thing is the original recipe called to season it with some salt, pepper, and cayenne. I'm gonna be using this garlic jalapeno rub by Heath Riles. I got to meet Heath Riles um, a few months back up in Salt Lake City, nice guy. Um, bought some of his stuff at Bucky's on my way back home and then he sent me some stuff. But this garlic jalapeno rub has been one of my favorites. I've tried a lot of his rubs since he sent them to me. Did find one I don't like and that'll be the subject of my next video is the one I don't like. But I do like this one a lot and we're gonna use it in the macaroni and cheese. So y'all stay tuned. All right, I removed the pork patties and what I'm doing is cleaning up here. I already rinsed it once and this is the second rinsing. That water's gonna evaporate off. And I got my discada clean now. I didn't want all those uh, pork pieces in the uh, in the pasta. I poured in a gallon of water. Some of it will spill out a little bit because this is one of those that doesn't have sides. All right, so that's a gallon of water. About four liters if you're from Canada. Cuatro litros if you're from Mexico. All right, this water's beginning to boil, so we're gonna put in about four cups of elbow macaroni a liter if you're from Canada, all right? And we're gonna let that just sit there and boil. I'm gonna go ahead and cover it and let it boil. Every so often, I'm gonna give it a stir because this is a you know, concave cooking vessel and so it's hotter right down there on the bottom. So move the stuff from the bottom to the sides and the stuff to the sides to the bottom. Let it cook. All right, when it starts boiling rapidly, this the steam pushes this up a little bit and the water starts coming out the sides. That's usually about the time I stir it each time. I've done this about three or four times now. So that's kind of my built-in timer. It does that when you cook rice too. Dog's barking at something, ignore him. But as you can see, the water line was way up here. And as this pasta begins to cook, the water evaporates out and I continue to stir. We're almost to the point where we're gonna start mixing up this mac and cheese. Hush, Waldo. How much longer, Papa Smurf? We're almost there. All right, as you can see, most of the water has evaporated off and this macaroni is about done. And I switched sides of the camera so I can reach down here and turn this fire down to a simmer. Now it's just at a simmer, but the water's still boiling and boiling off of there. and. Uh, in just about 20 or 30 seconds from now, we're gonna add the butter and start mixing our macaroni and cheese up. All right, almost all the water has evaporated off. 
and I don't want it to stick down on the bottom too much. You can start to see that a little bit is, and of course there's a little bit of water, but that's why I left it on simmer. It's gonna to continue to cook out of there. There is an entire stick of butter. Let's get that melted and mixed all in here with this. All right, I got this Falstaff church key, which I opened up this evaporated milk. Make sure you're using the evaporated milk, uh, not the condensed milk. Those are different things. You know, you want the uh, pet milk, not the Eagle brand. And we're gonna put that whole can of evaporated milk into this. You gotta punch that hole for the, the, the water, the air to come in. Now, we're gonna begin to mix this up. Oh yeah, we're getting to the good part now. Getting to the good part. You said, well, it's supposed to be macaroni and cheese, not macaroni and milk. Cheese comes last, be patient, be patient. All right, the original recipe calls for Dijon mustard. Uh, I've used yellow mustard, I've used uh, brown mustard, I've used Creole mustard, I've used lots of different kinds of mustards. Dijon and Creole are my favorites, but I also like this stuff here, this sweet pepper stuff, all right? The original recipe also calls for, um, look at that, I spilt it. Trying to shake it down to the bottom. That's all right, I'll mix you in there too. Just a few squirts of your favorite type of mustard. If you don't like brown or Dijon, use yellow, that's fine. I'm gonna use this pepper mustard to give it a little bit of a um, little bit of a tang to it, even more than the jalapeno does, because the original recipe calls for cayenne, and that's good. But this uh, garlic jalapeno rub from um, Heath Riles, that's gonna be all so good in this. And as you can see, it's all simmering, just trying to get that mustard mixed through there. All right, time for the star of the show, y'all. Garlic jalapeno rub. All right, we're just gonna sprinkle. Sprinkle it all, a light dusting across the top. Once, mix it through. Get back down in the sauce. Get back down. This macaroni and cheese is such a delicious thing. And you can make it in a skillet on top of your stove too. You may want to adjust the amounts. And I, like I said, I do have a recipe where I make this in a skillet, all right? And it'll be the link down below and it was in the iCards earlier in this show. All right, now let's mix. Add one more dusting across there like that. All right, now, we wanna start adding in the cheese. I had a pound of sharp cheddar cheese that I grated up and you don't wanna put this all in there at once. You wanna put this in there in, about, in batches of about three or four batches, thirds or fourths, all right? And so that's probably enough cheese for now. We're gonna get that mixed up. and melt it in there and then we add the other cheese and then so you don't want to do the cheese in batches. All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just add this last batch. So I'm doing it in three batches here, okay? And get this cheese mixed in there and um, come on out of there. Get all out of that bowl. Get all that sharp cheddar cheese out that bowl. Don't want any sticking in there. Mm -mm. All right. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the thing off. The residual heat will keep this hot and let me get this cheese melted into it. All right, now I'm gonna place my pork patties back in here just like that. Take the lid, cover it up, bring it inside and serve it on the counter on the little trivet that I have that goes with this. All right. Time for the taste test. Now look at that right there. Look at that right there. Got that pork patty, that mac and cheese, and some garden fresh cucumber and tomato salad, uh, all on a classy paper plate. Yeah, I know, I'm doing this outside, all right? Uh, anyway, I've made this mac and cheese several times on the skillet on the stove. That's the first time I've ever made it in this kind of knew it'd work. It's also the first time I've ever used the garlic jalapeno rub in here, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna be good, so. Oh, Mr. Heath Riles knows what he's doing. That garlic jalapeno rubs good in his mac and cheese, but if you don't have it, you can season it with salt, pepper, and cayenne. Good taste. That sweet mustard and sweet heat mustard's good in it too. I've used it in it before. All right, I'm gonna taste this pork patty. I know this wasn't the recipe for the pork patty, but um, oh my goodness. That's really good. Mm garlic butter 
I might should have put that in the macaroni and cheese or a little bit of it. But the macaroni and cheese is good with the garlic jalapeno rub. Hey, I gotta go eat this. I'm hungry, y'all. Thanks for watching Big Lou Barbecue.